It's a beautiful theme of the song. All to Jesus I surrender. Not 50%, not 65, 35, but all to Jesus I surrender. This morning I would invite you to open with Book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 12. Acts, chapter 4, verse 12. Acts, chapter 4, 12. Neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Let me open also Philippians chapter 2 verse 9 as a part of the key text that we read. Philippians chapter 2 Verse 9. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and gave him a name which is above every name. Today, the word salvation and the word peace is widely used positively or negatively. And the composition of the recipe is different from religion to religion. Some religions see the peace with violence. Another religion sees peace in penance. Another one sees peace nearby finding the true source of peace. And here we find, as we read, as accounted in Acts 4, 12, a salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. This is a very unique question how shall I inherit eternal life? How may I be saved? Is a wonderful question asked. But many names comes by different religion. But there is only one name. When I was young, still in schools and colleges, we were asked to write an essay on a little phrase, what is in a name? Many times it comes wonderfully with the different concept of arguing name, define what is name. And what is in a name? A many kind of argument for or against, favoring and non-favoring. But now I want to find out a free thought, what is in the name? The name of Christ, the only name by which we may be saved. When we were still in college, we had a requirement to do some courses on literature. One of those happened to be the literature of Shakespeare. And he writes in one, this month happened to be the month of Shakespeare. You know, he died and he was born and died in April. When April comes, a few things come to mind quickly. The April Fool's Day, but among our church, we know the birth of one of our senior brethren, birthday. And then they also know that it is the olden days that used to be one of those, uh, the new day of the French people. You know, we, you know the other day, Brother Sass was mentioning how the, the April Fool was formed, and nobody knows how was the history of this day. However, some historians record that 
the French people used to have from March 25 to April 1st, their New Year. But then, when this was changed to January, some people still continue keeping that. And that was called as April Fish Day, not April Fool Day, but today they call because people start making mockery on those people to continue to have the old New Year. However, this April is a day for Shakespeare. They mention about the literature field. And many people talk about a different thing for the other Christian calms, also different other uh, uh, significant events. Now coming further here, he said that there is nothing in a name. What? The Bible says there is something in name, but he says that there is nothing in a name, he writes. A rose that is called by the other name is as sweet. Can we agree on that? A rose is rose you call by some other name. It is as sweet and as smell as it is, even if you call by another name. But the Bible speaks other ways. A good name is rather to be chosen than silver and gold. We will find to that verse later. And it is hard, if you would just analyze this thing, let us find out quickly some of this. Is there something in the name? Sometime back, one of our senior brethren was telling about the name and the character formation too. In the Southern Hemisphere, one of the countries, someone was named Jezebel. She acted in the later almost with the characteristic of that. So choosing a name is important, and that also has something connected. That's what in our country, before choosing the name, they find the meaning of the name. And now, that is just a literal word for the name. Now let us go further with the name, a popular name so let us take today. Now if I write a check of a million dollars, and I give it to Sister Anita, and she goes to a Kovia bank to cash. Okay, I got a million dollars, she's full of smile. She goes to a Kovia, a Kovia bank knows her very well. She comes and goes every day as a treasurer of the church. A deposit withdraws, no problems. They know that she's a Christian girl. Now when she goes there with a million dollar check, the man, the, the clerk calls the manager. Manager raises her brows and try to find out, check why she brings million dollars, who is the man who signs, what is the name, and that. All right, they find the check and verify my account number in NBC Bank. Is million dollar there? Well, they try to find out her, where she is going to deposit. Now they cross check, two names. All this while she had a good reputation in the bank, when the million dollar comes, they raise the bank, bro, to find out what is happening to be this lady. Now try to find out who the man who signed. Ten times maybe check my bank. Maybe call my bank manager or maybe central bank to find out if that was a genuine check. It was genuine. Original document. Signature was original. But the man did not have that credibility to sign a million dollar. There is something in a name that Suresh Kumar does not have a million dollar worth signature there. Well, at the same time, another one, Rose, goes with a million dollar check. But the signatory just says, that's a real check you got. And you go to First National Bank. They smile. Come on, please sit down, ma'am. And they gave you all kind of good treatment. And then they as full of smile and quickly two people attend to all you need. Why? Because your check was signed by Bill Gates. No question. No question was asked. Just to verify everything else, okay, everything's done. A quick. Both brought a genuine checkbook, a proper accounts, and both had the good relationship with the bank. And both parties were known. In fact, the NBC bank knows me very well. 
Wachovia Bank knows me personally very well, as much as I can transfer a couple of thousand dollars. When it comes to million dollar, the very manager who knows Sister Anita and Suresh Kumar now puts a question. Sometime who knows? They may call police to find me why I signed a million dollars. Right? Is there something in a name? There is. And that, when you say a name, what is in a name? You may call Rose by another name and it still smells good. And Jasmine smells good. It's still called Jasmine or with something else in different languages. But a name has something to do. I remember an allegory story which we read when we were young people, when we were small, let's say. Well, we don't use this kind of story just for a moral here. <coughs> it's a kind of poem part. There was a king in the forest. Who is the king of forest? Lion. The lion. And he went out around to prove his name. The easiest thing that he can find was a monkey which just stretched his tail well beneath the branches, pulled the tail and said, hey, tell me what is, who is the king of this forest? And he was terrified, oh, king, you are the king. So without any second thought, he said, oh, king, you are the king of the forest. All right, I let you go. It went and found another very dimmed deer there in the forest. <coughs> Just goes and threatens, hey, tell me, who is the king of forest? Is that, I admit, you are the king. All right, let you go. Then comes another animal, maybe a giraffe who runs faster. Is that, tell me, what is, who is the king of the forest? What is the name of the king of the forest? Is it, I swear you are the king of the forest, my lord. Lion, the great, is the king of the forest. I let you go. Now comes the pride, the king of the forest. Walks so proud and finds another animal, which is the elephant. Jumps from behind, stays on the back, Ask, tell me, what is the name of the king of the forest? And the lion could not, and the elephant could not see who was behind, but can guess who was that. Tans his trunk behind, pulls his back, and just swings around, throws him off 50 feet away, and this king of forest slam his face on the tree and shake his head. And he said, hey, wait a minute. All right, all right. If you don't know the name, it is all of you don't have to get mad. <laughs> he just walked away. Brethren, is there something in a name? Sometimes a name is adapted, created, titled and say that I'm so big. Today, as you can see in different religion, they believe salvation. Many names. If you go to India, they say the salvation is through Krishna, Buddha. If you go to China, they may say it's Zoroastrianism. Some of the people with all the bag and religion, they would tell all kinds of different names. And they get their salvation. But the Bible very well clearly says there is no other name. There is only one name. And with hearing that name, every knee shall bow. And we have to analyze if there is something in a name. Proverb 22, verse 1 says that a good name. I think it's known to everybody. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 1. A good name is more desirable. Say that a good name is rather to be chosen than silver and gold and the great riches. And it says that a great esteem should be more valuable than the silver. I still would 
tell one more <coughs> illustration which I heard when I was very young. Then we will go with the subject. There was a minister who was approached by one of the two brothers, blood brothers. And these two brothers, when they were growing up, they grew up to be notorious. They were naughty boys turned to notorious. They did all kind of things. They were unfaithful in everything. They cheated the customers. Unfaithful to wife and family. They abused all kind of things they could. They used, let me say abused, all kind of material that they're supposed not to use. They were not faithful to their jobs. They fought with each other. They even hit the dogs and other animals which had nothing to do. Such a bad boys turned into a bad man. And one of them died prematurely. Say, let's say the older brother died. The younger one comes to a minister and say, Pastor, you have to do me a favor. What? My brother died. Pastor smiled, well, by his death, at least some crime rate will be reduced. But he asked, all right, what can I do for you? Pastor, I want you to conduct the funeral service. Said, all right. But you must pronounce that my brother is saint. He is a righteous. You must spell out that he is a saint. And the pastor replied to him, Hey, you got to be kidding. I think you should be joking. <coughs> Everybody knows in the whole town what your brother is. What was his character? How he grew up? And how is he today? And how he died? You want me to tell that he was a saint and good? Yes. Quickly he put in his packet. He thrust in the hand of the pastor a hundred thousand dollars. Now, you must pronounce my brother saint. The pastor knows that, well, okay, this money is not his money. He cheated many people. Well, he accepted that money. And he comes to the funeral service. <coughs> the chapel was full of people, both inside and outside. Not because he had some kind of reputation they wanted to pay homage or honor to him, but they wanted to know whether he really died. And when they was there, that everyone was there, and the minister started preaching. He stands there, he started speaking about this man. You know what kind of man this was he was that is lying before you? You know how he cheated you all in the business building? And you all know that how he treated his wife? And you all know how he hicked the street dogs and all that? And you know what kind of how life he lived? Everybody knew what life he was. But compared to his brother, this man was saint. My brother, as you see this, the importance of good name, there was a comparison. It's a little bit better than him, but the name they earned was negatively known. Everybody knows. A popular people are known, and notorious people also known. And here, these men were known for their infamous name. And here, people compare with the names. Now, as soon as, let's say that, now we don't read much of literature, but as soon as the name of, uh, let's say that uh, Shakespeare is mentioned, what comes to our mind? His poem, right? William Shakespeare, let me put his full name, William Shakespeare. And now let's say that if we talk about Albert Einstein, what comes to your mind? Scientist. Science. Especially his theory of relativity. Right? E equal to MC square. Right? Immediately that comes there. Well, if somebody tells about the name of Hitler, uh, Joseph Stalin, what comes to your mind? war and their act of uh, 
a kind of uh, terrorism, right? And we make compare some of those names. Say it's Bill Gates comes to business, computer, or Microsoft. Say Dell. Oh, computers. Just immediately everything comes to us. And the other day I was just reading an article in the Roanoke Times. It tells about Google. <coughs> It became a verb today. It's actually not a word, it became a verb. And they also use it as an adjective. And they try to use as a word, and from, from now on, that will be in a dictionary. He wants to Google around. So can you say that? For a few years ago, there was no word at all. Today, the word has come in. Now, what is in a name? The Bible tells us that there is something in a name. There is a name above every name. It is precious name. It is a powerful name. It is a saving name. And it is a conquering name. And it is eternal name. It is the name of Jesus. And it is also a controversial name today among Christians though. They put all kind of cautions. Many times those who believe in Christians also think that, okay, just to speak about Christ is too little. It's a basic nursery kindergarten lesson. Well, if you take away Christ, even preaching has no power. One of our ministers preached from here is that he was telling an, an analogy of a man who attended a prophecy seminar. He understood very well. After a couple of days, he did not come to the seminar. And he was attending in another seminar uh, another, the place of study where they were teaching about Christ and Christ-centered message. When he returned after days, he asked, where were you for a few days? Well, I went to another place where they were teaching Christ. And he found something there. We need prophecy. We need doctrine. We need church attendance. We need everything. But with all these things, what is needed much more is what? Christ. We know the experience of Paul. He spoke philosophy to philosophy, logic to logic, doctrine to doctrine, and he was not success. But when he just preached simple words, Christ, and there was success. And Christ is supreme. He is nucleus. He is total. He is complete. That's what we read in the Spirit of Prophecy, that Christ is the complete system of truth. Is it not right? Amen. He is the complete system of truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And who is the truth? He says that I am the truth. I am the way. I am the life. We have to continue just remembering this, my brethren. This name is a name above every name. Do you remember a question which was asked in the time of trial of Christ, which is accounted in Matthew 22, 20, 27, 22? What shall I do with Jesus, which is called Christ? What shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? And I ask you the same question, what shall we do? Are we inviting him to be with us as a primary counselor? Are we going to have him as an important the person in our life, in every walk of life? We have a very wonderful name. It is a, for, this name gives, just when you put together with all kind of studies that we have, it has the forgiveness for the unforgiving. It's a summary of the thought that I took from the spirit of prophecy. There is love for the unlovable. There is mercy for merciless. There is hope for hopeless. Can we agree on that? Amen. But in all other names, you find many things, but not this. There is forgiveness for unforgivable. 
and all this great name that we mention, like say, let us say Alexander the Great. Is it really a big name? It was a title to him as Alexander the Great. Was it really great? No. He died just at his prime age. He could not conquer himself, but he titled himself Alexander the Great. People named Lord, King, and Queens, and Sirs, and Masters, and all those names. Does it have something to do? It's all that goes. You know, sometimes when we go to some places, and when we were still students, we were taken to some of those uh, the domes and uh, the places where they bury the important people, very famous people. And if you see some of those places, in our country we had also a great king, they call Akbar the Great. He was just like uh, Alexander, he controlled the entire Asia and portion of Central Asia and all the way up to Persia, Turkey and all that area, way down to portion of Indonesia. And everything was one country under Akbar the Great. And we happened to, I think Janet was with me, we went there. And if you visited there, was he there? And Taj Mahal, most people know in India. There was a place of a burial of the wife of the king. When he went there, was there any important thing there? Well, the tomb is there, the one who was buried was there. But when you go and visit, when we have to do the research on the Bible land, when visit the dome of Christ, is he there? Is he empty? Is risen. That gives us an assurance that we have the life, life eternal. And there is another great name. In the time of Jesus, there was another great name. Do you know that name? <coughs> Herod the Great. He was just as much as the story of those two brothers. He murdered nine of his ten wives. Is it a good name? For no reasons. No reasons. And if you read the history, he did another treacherous thing. He made a decree to execute his only son on the day the king would die. The son should be executed. You know the reason why? The people hated Herod and loved his son. So he wondered, at least on the day he died, if they would be happy, they would be happy because the son died or vice versa. He wanted to make a confusion in his mind. He was a terror when he was alive. He was a terror even when he was dead. This name is a dangerous name. There can be many names, but we love this sweet name, which is the great, he is called the great I am. And this name, a disputed name, a favored name, the loud name is one that has the assurance, my brethren. It's not just the name Jesus, but in a Christ object lesson, page 3 and 12, we read that when we, when Christ comes to us, everything is changed. Our thoughts are matched with his thought, and our mind is matched with his mind, and our action is changed to his, and everything that we do for his glory. That's what the name that we say, just not the name Christians, not just simply writing on a chest or maybe in the bumper sticker that a Christ. And I just, I was just driving behind a car to say that I wish you follow Christ as close as you follow me. Well, if you're tailgating. But, brethren, following Christ means doing what he wants us to do. And the name of Christ is in us, I will write in, I will give you a new name. And the new name should be reflecting his character, his righteousness, his right doing, my brother. That's what it needed. All our names, other surnames, and all those famous names has no value at all. But if you have the name of Christ, take the name of Jesus with you. 
And he can give us. We, we just sing that some J take the name of Jesus with you. And we also sing, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face. And the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. And this, just in the precious name of Jesus, we could. And we have to consider, my brethren, where are we? Many times what happens? We think that, okay, preaching Christ is only to the Gentiles, the people in the world, those who do not know Christ. Can we just sit for a while, think for a while, and see that, is it correct? It's only for them. No, it's for me, for us, and all of us right here. Many times what happens is, we think that, oh, okay, I know more about Christ. Have you known more about Christ already? No, we know more, but we still yet to know more. We will learn more about him for eternity. We have not completely learned everything. Amen. Many times what happens is, we need to preach about Christ, even among ourselves right here. And we need Christ all the time, no matter where we are. How long we have the experience of life in the church? Sometimes we tend to miss the point. Brother, we have a max teacher here. He teaches A plus B, the whole square equal to A square plus 2AB plus B square, right? But do you teach that to the college students? But they know the formula, but they don't study it. They think that I know it. But sometime, I asked them, I had a student with me. She asked me the spelling for May, the month of May. I said, M-A-Y. I said, I know, that's May, may I give you. But I want the spelling from May, the month May after April. I said, I understand that, but that is the same spelling. It was in the university. That spelling is known for the kindergarten students. Sometimes the major important is one syllable with the three letter. It's a difficult sometime. And the same thing, the small name Jesus, a simplest one which could be a life-giving one for everybody, could be sometime very, very in the low profile. Many other things comes. The church programs, important, yes. But if you overrule, overlooked all other things about Christ. Church attendance is important. Yes, true. But let Christ be first. Then all the rest comes. Business meeting. Yes, it is important. But let Christ be first and the other one comes. Institution. Yes, it's important. But let Christ be first. The rest comes later. Prayer meetings. Many times. This one is wherever we go. We say that the healthy condition of the church is known by the attendance in the prayer meeting. Many times what happens is prayer meeting is neglected. <coughs> and that is also need to come there. That is one part. But the plus, Christ should go before. Christ is first. Then all the rest comes as a package, a together. You don't buy a tire and then buy a car, right? You buy the car, the tire come, they give you a spare tire. As a bonus, they can give even two. Right? But just because you buy a tire, the car doesn't come. Let Christ be first, the, all the rest comes as a package. Amen. So Christ is needed today. Do we need it? Do, do we need him today? And they need it yesterday, we need him today, and our children need tomorrow, our grandchildren also need it. Christ would not return until that time. He is Alba and Omega. He is first and the last. And He is everything He needs us. And we need Him. Is it correct? Amen. He needs us. And we need Him. In the book of Psalm, chapter 40, there is one word comes. It says that you and I are God in a pit. If we are sunk in a pit, you know, the little hole. And I just want to give an illustration of a man. 
who fell into a pit. And I just make a comparison with the, in the parable of Jesus, when the good, good Samaritan came and helped the one who was wounded and bruised on his way to his business. Here is a man fell into the pit, comes a Christian scientist. He uses his philosophical scientific idea and says that, brother, you only think you are in a pit, and he passed away. He passed by, so not passed away. A Pharisee has come, and he says to him, only bad people fall into the ditch. He made his justification, you are bad, so you fell into the ditch. Some people tell that if you're bad, you get to cancer. And mathematician came and said, he calculated how far he fell into the pit. And he calculated how he may have walked and he fell. And a reporter comes there. He wanted the full coverage of the whole story, how you walked and how you slept and how many minutes before you fell and how he felt when he went, how he was feeling when he was descending. He wanted to have the full report. And the modern passerby. And a fundamentalist come, a fundamentalist preacher, let's put it that way, and he comes and said, Brother, you deserve the pit. Very orient. You deserve it because you did. And the realistic comes and he says that, oh, okay, um, I think, yes, that's a pit. You are in a pit. He agreed, confirmed that you are in a pit and gone. And as scientist comes, he calculated the pressure per square inch, how much would be needed in order that they can bring him out. And he passes. He made all kind of calculations. Okay, so, many, so much is the depth, so many square inches of the pressure is needed. And the geologist come and say that, okay, go enjoy the status surrounding of the rock and enjoy being there. He was trying to tell that, did you see there? A kind of rock, he named the rocks there. Did you see that, what is there? And he was trying to give him all geological study. And a self-pitying man comes and he says that, hey, you haven't seen anything until you have seen my pit. He is comparing that, oh, the other one is better. My brethren, can this help this man? And comes in another one, an optimist. The pessimist came and told something, an optimist comes and said, hey, cheer up. Things could have been worse. At least you are okay. And the pessimist comes, too bad. It's too bad, really bad. Things will get worse. Hmm. It's going to be rain. It's going to shake you. And you're going to trench. Oh, it's going to be worse. And he puts all kind of things on his mind. Say the same thing, the devil can tell that you are too far away from Jesus. Hey, you have my days, this, 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 this. Then comes Jesus. What he did, he stretched his arms, pulls him out, plays him on the strong ground, and he said, okay, be there in a strong foundation. He will not slip away. And that is Christ. That is the name that we need. Romans chapter 5, verse 8, just to conclude. But God demonstrated his, Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrated his own love for us in this while we were still sinners. Christ died for you. It's just like a man who made an ad to find his lost dog. A lost dog was touched by this man with an ad. The ad goes, Blind in one eye, one ear is shot off, and broken tail, has three different kind of illness, 
and he just recently neutered. His name is Lucky, but this unlucky dog had all kind of defects which is needed, yet he allowed it, he looked for it, he had spent money to add, he churched and he found. My brethren, apart from Christ, as far as selected message volume 1, page 333 in conclusion, apart from Christ, we have no merit, no righteousness. Our sinfulness, our weakness, our human imperfection make it impossible that we should appear before God unless we are clothed in Christ's spotless righteousness. In the name, we are to be found in him, not having our own righteousness, but righteousness which is in Christ. Then in the name that is above every name, the only name given among men, whereby men can be saved. May God help us that this name was a name, a power-giving name for the disciples. The healing words for anyone who came in connect with Christ with all their sufferings. A life-giving word for today. If Christ is in us, in this church, in our family, we have the life. What is in a name? Is there something in a name? Yes. The name, a great name, sweet name, that is Christ. Merciful Father in heaven, we thank you for this great name. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for his supreme sacrifice. We thank you for the great invitation that he gives to each one of us. We thank you, Heavenly Father, also for the assurance of eternal life if we would accept him. Help us, Heavenly Father, that we would receive him into our heart and give him permanent residency in our heart. We pray thou would continue helping us. We pray thee thou would bless our young people in this church and also thou would use them for thy cause and to be the pillar of thy church for tomorrow. We also pray that to bless our young people around the world and also they work and workers in different parts. Help us, Heavenly Father, that this name may be a prime name in our household and may the life of Christ be reflecting in our life, that we would be just not by name a Christian, but in our action, in our obedience, in our revealing of character of Christ, we pray that thou would continue helping us that the mind of Christ be in each one of us. Thou would also bless the afternoon meetings, help us also to make needed preparations spiritually. We also pray the Heavenly Father that would continue helping us that we make needed preparation for the incoming, the communion service in this church family. Continue helping us. Bless the brethren who are traveling, grant them traveling mercy. Accept our prayer and supplication. We thank you also for the visitors. Bless them and help them. May they have the wonderful experience with thee. When they travel back home, may they have also the traveling mercy be with them. Continue being with us today and the days to come. Bless those who are unable to be here. Help us to love thee and serve thee. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.